The best readings are the ones, well, I mean, all readings should be organically done. You know, they should be, uh, they should be manifested in a very organic way, right? The idea of you selling your services, you putting yourself out in your videos, but you know, people can come, they can see, and if they want to do a consultation, they do it. But if you try to push it on them, you know, not necessarily through, through selling yourself, but just, hey, I want to read your chart. Sometimes it's, something's going to go wrong. You know, you got to let it be, you know, you got to let the universe happen, right? And this is more or less what happens when, when people try to uh, test an astrologer with a prashna, right? And oh. they try to test an astrologer and you see it in the prashna and the prashna tells you, I think this is like an inverse way of that, right? The idea of you trying to read to someone who is not destined to have that uh, chart read at that moment, then it won't manifest because in the end, you know, God is the only one responsible for people getting good readings, bad readings, or no readings at all. Yeah, no, I have also seen, you know, suppose I am doing the reading for somebody during a because the concept of Hora is always there. Now, some planet is ruling the time which we are talking. Definitely, I have seen that. Suppose I am doing a consultation, suppose. It is a uh, sun hora, for example, suppose. And when the consultation starts at that time, and then if I see that sun is a functional malefic in the chart of that client, then I have seen the entire consultation keeps revolving around that house. I have seen. Entire conversation, entire one hour, one and a half hour, it keeps revolving on that. We keep coming again and again and again. No, suppose Sun is the eighth lord, like for a Capricorn Lagna, for example. Then I have always seen that the questions that time, if it's whole of Sun, it will always be linked with some kind of scandal or insult or some problem with in laws. It will always happen. That that will always happen, you know? or sometimes if it is related to Jupiter, like. I I understand that now the focus is going to be on children or spirituality, either of the two. And when they send me the mail that I have booked your consultation, that time also I see when I see the mail. Oh, really? Wow. Yes. And uh, if now now sometimes what happens is <laughs> so there you you are doing the reading in a particular hora, but <laughs> that planet is a functional malefic for you, <laughs> not for the person. So then sometimes what happens is you are totally irritated and exhausted after the reading. Has it happened with you sometimes that some yeah. clients are like very nice. You can deal with them very nicely. Whatever you say, they agree. Most of the things. It, happens, it happens more when I read cards. I get really tired when I read cards. But with astrology, I kind of get tired after, you know, you got to deal with, with doing the consultation, recording the consultation. You know, I, I do recordings and I send them. More than, yeah, than talking to person, you know, but it, it gets tiresome after a while. Yeah, I have seen if uh, that it's in the horror of a functional malefic for my chart. Oh my god, after 30 40 minutes, I'm exhausted, and then oh my god, I have to sit with this person for another 20 minutes. God save me. <laughs> that's that's the job. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. that's the job. <laughs> yeah. So now nowadays what I have started doing is when I schedule the consultation, I do not schedule it in a aura of a planet which is a functional malefic. Because then I am like, if I am having difficulty doing that consultation, then that person will also not benefit. So in that case, I am like, okay. I will schedule it <laughs> when the aura of my ninth lord is going or fifth lord or something like this. So that I can also be benefited and that person can also be benefited. And, and that's the beauty. You know, you have the list. You can go to Drik Panchang and you can select which aura when it is running and then you can figure out. I mean, the best aura in my opinion to do, although if you are... <laughs> If you're a Taurus like that's not going to be that good for you. But, you know, Jupiter, Hora, Pisces or, or Sagittarius is very good to do readings, in my opinion. You know, I, I try not to get too involved with Prashna when I do uh, the time of doing the reading, right? I do the Prashna when I do the reading, but the idea of, of being aware of the Prashna at the moment of the reading I mean, if it happens, it happens. And if that's, that's God's will, I guess. But yeah, it's, 
to, to do these readings or to do conference or to talk about astrology, you know, the idea of having that Jupiter Hora in the yes. Ascendant with good dignity, uh, Jupiter with no afflictions to other important things. It's very important because that's the guru. That's the wisdom. You know, the wisdom is going to come from guru and it's going to come out your mouth. And hopefully, you know, the people are going to like it and understand it. Un unless they have a bad ninth house, as you mentioned. <laughs> yeah, and uh, sometimes I've seen even if the ninth house is afflicted or the ninth lord is badly placed, but if Jupiter is in a good dignity, then things necessarily are not that you know challenging sometimes. Like we can still do, and if both are afflicted, like once I had done a reading for a lady long back, and both the situation was very bad. Jupiter was in debility and the ninth house was afflicted and the ninth lord was also badly placed, I guess. And this was before I had heard from James Baha regarding this. this yes, James Baha, whose books are very important. I mean, I, I think <coughs> James Baha is the, the man responsible for the phrase Vedic astrology, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Or is one of the first. You know, I have, I have his books. Very good man. And I've seen uh, your interviews with him. Yeah, so I had done a reading for this lady before James Baha told us regarding this ninth house. And I swear, if I, I would have known it, then I would have been careful. But then what happened was, uh, we were doing the reading and everything was fine. And after the reading got over, then she said, suddenly she sent me a message. Yeah, I'm not happy with the reading. Ooh. She said, you have to refund me the entire money now. Ooh. And then I'm like, what do I do then I said if you want I, I, I will give you another reading but this is not the correct way then she she started blaspheming me she started abusing me she said that oh you don't know anything blah 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 this and that and then one day James Bar ends up telling me this and then I'm like thank you now I know at least that's the job that's the yeah. job unfortunately those stories are, are are not not usual but they do happen yeah, not yeah. usual some once in a blue moon that happens this kind of exactly stuff. once in a blue moon exactly but I mean, you know that's that's the job and that that's how you got to do it and and that's why horas are very important i mean prashna charts are very important when you do a reading you know the other day i had this which a week ago i think i had this guy who had very bad planets, you know, debilitated Mercury. Um, you know, he had a, a very trashed uh, Saturn. And I did the Prashna and the Prashna, the planets were very good. Okay. So this guy was going through the best time of his life. Oh. So he, he, he was going through a good job. He, he was having problems with, with relationships. But the idea is that the Prashna was telling me, you know, he's in a good place. So what we did is we concentrated on the good things of life. And obviously, you know, the best thing an astrologer can do is not talk about bad things if they're not asked about the bad things. So, you know, get that out of the way. Don't even mention that and just be uh, present. And prashnas are very important because they give you like that little spice to um, really understand the moment in which you are and the moment in which you're transmitting this information to a client in an effective manner, of course. Yeah, I have also seen when we make the prasna, in the prasna, whichever planet is there in the ninth house, then uh, the, the client sometimes tries to behave like that planet I have seen. Because, mm. because that that is showing, because the prasna will be same for everybody. That will also show what, the, what people are eating. No? It will not only show that you are doing consultation, because there are so many houses in your house. It will show so many things. But for you, it is like for me, because I'm doing the consultation, for me, the ninth house is important. So if I see that there is a benefit like Jupiter or moon, then the consultation is like uh, more focused towards topics like how can I improve myself? Or suppose if sun is there, how can I improve my life or to some extent my finances? And if Venus is there, it's relationships. Mercury is there, it's definitely finances. They have some other business plans and they are wanting like, oh, should I sell this? Should I start this? Should I do that? And at the same time, if there are malefics like Rahu or Saturn, then they're like, oh, I've been cheated. I'm crying from last three years. What will happen? Please tell me. And the sign where the malefic is placed, which is in the ninth house, that will tell what the nature of the problem is. Like suppose Saturn is in Virgo, then 
the suffering is coming because of finances because Virgo is sixth house and if it is in Gemini it can be related to some documents like you sign some document and you are wondering that can I retake that document back so these are the ways you know how you can figure out Prasna is very important Hora is very important Prasna is very important definitely amazing is there anything else <laughs> <laughs> like oh no i do you want to talk about anything else i really enjoyed this conversation man you know you have a lot of stories which are very nice and and in a way that's that's what really keeps us in the game right the idea of of these stories and the experiences we have with customers clients or whatever you want to call them i mean with people who just go to astrologers to find the answers and we you know we connect to this place and we use our studies and our intuition to do the best job possible but sometimes you know things like this happen and it's just part of it but it's fabulous nonetheless to have the opportunity to to be able to do this in these modern times right where where one, astrology is is being reborn yes one last thing i would like to say is when when you when i make the prasna then if i see that a planet is in Gustan for especially the eighth house i've seen then what happens is very interesting i've seen <laughs> i don't know if you have seen but i have seen at least because i suggest a lot of mantras and other remedies for the person to do so i have seen uh, like there was one person who had suggested a mantra to chant and that mantra was somehow a bit long all right and it was related to venus and the consultation was a general consultation he was asking about relationships about finances and all this but venus was in the eighth house in the personal chart so then i was like okay so now it can happen like this before the consultation i was thinking that maybe he can ask too many questions on venus or he will say that the only problem in my life is relationships but it was none of these all right so then i was wondering i mean how how did this happen you know venus was in it so some, he was hiding something about relationships uh no he was not hiding i'll tell you what happened <laughs> I had given him a remedy, a mantra, I told him to chant for Venus and I gave him some other remedies. Okay, you should eat this, you should not eat this, you should do this, do that. Everything was fine, very nice. Then what happened was, <laughs> after three days, he called me back, he messaged me and said that, excuse me sir, all the other mantras you've given is very good, it's perfectly fine, I'm doing. But that mantra <laughs> which you gave for Venus, Sir, it's too long. Do you have some other short one? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, sealed. He's not destined to get the remedy for Venus. And then I said, my dear sir, it is not you or me who decides mantras and the length, okay? Uh, if, if you can't, do, I mean, if you don't like, then also you do. That's how we get trained, right? In training, we may run, we may jog, we may learn things which we don't like, but still we do because we are getting trained. Saturday. And that person was like, again he mailed me. He said, "Sir, somehow I don't know. I am. I can't do this, mother. For some the other mantras are perfect. I start and I sit and it's like bang, bang, bang. I speak and it's over. But this mantra is too long, sir. Please." And then he asked me, "Sir, sir, can I just chant it three times instead of hundred and eight times?" And then I'm like, "If you have already decided that you will not chant, then why are you mailing me? You do whatever you want." <laughs> <laughs> so then I realized that maybe when I was doing the reading, he was not objecting that time. Yeah. But eventually that that prasna has acted. You see, it is like amazing. It's mind blowing how it works. You know, it's like <laughs> I get mind boggled sometimes. Yes, it it works. Yeah. Especially I have seen if planets are in Kendras during the prasna, those planets, they are generally uh, like suppose if Jupiter is well placed in the Kendra, you will hear the client is saying sometimes like this. Actually, you know, in my life, my health is only problem. Children are doing fine. If Venus is in Kendra, my wife is very good. <laughs> they true. will say all these things. If, if planet because Kendras are Nesargik Shubhasthan, they are naturally auspicious houses. So th these are things. I mean, so many things which I can keep sharing. <laughs> And we're young, so yeah. we still have a long way to go. If we if we last, of course, but yeah, we, we still have a lot of uh, a lot of stories that we're yet to hear, you know. And and 
this is this is a good thing about astrologers that you hear these stories and they're very enriching and they they teach you what you lo don't learn in books right the oral history the oral uh teachings of, of experience right Because and have you sometimes seen the nakshatra when you are talking with a client something related to that also is have, have you seen it sometimes which, which sometimes is extremely random in relation to that nakshatra right no i am saying that have have you seen like for example i have seen certain nakshatras in my experience they are related to love affairs or seducing a third party from an existing relationship like kritika nakshatra is one ashwini ashwini also but in ashwini that uh, the story is there where sukanya uh, finally chose her husband it was yeah. not one of the ashwini kumara so yeah. that's like kind of a a uh, thing where we understand but in kritika agni actually tries to seduce and he succeeds okay. also to some extent so i have seen that if in when the day moon is in kritika if you are doing a reading somehow or the other i have seen that and kritika people are very much interested in fire worship so yeah agni yeah yeah so i have seen these people they can have mars in uh, a very strong position or they like to fight they like to you know uh, do this martial arts they like to do all those things like kritika exactly. they separate things exactly things. in bharani also that can happen because it deals with yamraj and bharani is the nakshatra for butchers or they can have an experience of staying with somebody who is like a butcher <laughs> no that can be the focal point of the uh of the consultation that oh i have been abused by my husband or wife or anything like that i have had a bad bad experience and when suppose sometimes moon is in pushya then i see the person is asking oh i have too much weight problem how can i reduce it <laughs> yeah a cow <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah it's More. a cow <laughs> yeah or they are talking of adoption they want to adopt somebody or in kritika oh, also yeah. giving the milk to the people yeah yeah Yeah, and in Pushya, in Pushya, Pushya. Yeah, and in Pushya, I have seen or Kritika sometimes they will say that oh, will are we going to have a have a child in the next two years, and then they will ask me oh, if not, then can we adopt? These are the things they will somehow that topic will come up. It always happens. I mean, Panchang is so important. You know, the Hora and the Day Lord. Day Lord is also important. Day Lord, I don't have much experience. the day lord and 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 the hour lord i mean and when you do magical astrology which is something i also like to dabble in it's very important because it's a type of electional astrology that you do to do things right and i mean when you do muhurtas nakshatras are so important and when you do muhurtas the hour of the day is so important and the day you do it which is part of the panchanga scheme obviously that you just mentioned those five aspects are very important in order to uh, select the right moment on the right day with the right titi with the right karana with the right nakshatra to do the things that we want to do and not only that through this this is the evidence of free will you know this is how we can um uh, prove that free will exists the idea of using muhurtas uh, election or astrology to do whatever we want you know the panchanga but that's just another that's another topic for another video <laughs> yeah and last one thing i would like to say is uh, another experience i have had sometimes like suppose a uh, client comes and you know you he says the we will do a reading and then you do a phone consultation sometimes or you do a zoom consult zoom video recording like we are doing now so that time i see if they prefer zoom <laughs> then i see venus is really prominent in their chart because they always like you know not to see that visually <laughs> <laughs> and if mercury is prominent they are like okay phone conversation is okay yeah. i prefer to do all my consultations through the phone because i just like to sit in the sofa and you know just just be normal you know probably without shirt in my underwear i just i prefer doing telephone than zoom because you know in zoom you have to be presentable and you know uh, and the phone doesn't matter you know i i prefer phone consultations usually or just sending mp3s it's more it's it's easier yes yeah, so these are ways you know by which you can figure out and sometimes you can also see 
what you are doing when the person has sent you the mail. Like sometimes I see that when I am having kind of a task with somebody, and at that time somebody sends a mail. Okay. Then he's most likely asking about Mars. <laughs> Huh. Just check which house Mars is ruling in the chart. Yeah. Suppose that person is ruled by a Venusian Lagna, then Mars is the seventh lord. So his questions will be related to Venus, uh, related to marriage relationship. Partners, yes. Seventh lord. Because when you are having that agitation and frustration by seeing something, that means Mars is to some extent acting on you. And that time that mail is coming. So he or she will ask about Mars. And if you do Zoom conversations, look at the colors of the of the of the shirts they're wearing. For example, you're using red. I mean, I would have talked about Mars, maybe the sun, but more like like uh, Mars. I'm using black, so I would talk about Saturn. You know, these are the little things that we have to take in mind when we do readings, or the things they say. You know, there are some significators of phonetical sounds for the planets. I don't know them by heart. I got to reread them. But there are, for example, I, I remember that vowels are associated with the sun. So if the person starts the conversation by a, using a vowel or a word that starts with a vowel, for example, um, igloo, I don't know, <laughs> igloo, which starts with, 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 a, with a vowel, then you would look at the sun, right? Or just oh. listen to what they're talking about. Right. If they if they start talking about their spiritual life, you know that, oh, I love astrologers because I lived in an ashram and there was a Yotishi there, you know, go to the ninth house, go to Jupiter. If they start talking about, oh, Fernando, I feel so sad. I'm so dreadful. You know, I'm, I've been crying all these. Look to Saturn. If they have problems with relationships, they start talking about their husband, their wife. Look at Venus. Jupiter, if, if it's a woman, you know, if, if they have problems with, I don't know, I mean, if they have problems, if they just had an accident, look at Mars. And, and these are the little things that, that you start realizing are very important when you do readings, right? And that's why you have to have a clear mind, because I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes, sometimes I, don't, I don't pay attention to these omens and I just do the reading as I did with the Prashna, right? So, you know, you got to have a very clear mind about these things and use them because you're going to see that when you use them for all the people out there who are starting to do readings, you know, that you're going to get the edge. You're going to get that little spice that's going to make a difference in your, in, your, uh, in your consultation because at the end, it's making the client feel good, feel positive, and feel optimistic. You know, and, and, and I learned this from Kay and Rao in his books, you know, you don't tell a client never negative things. You try not to tell them negative things unless it is there, you know, <laughs> unless there is no other way to tell them, you know, you got to make the client feel good. You know, it, it's not that the client, you are not there to make the client feel bad. You got to make him feel good, feel optimistic that he can deal with this situation. We're going to Sayasati. We're going to give you these remedies, these mantras. Let's do it. You know, you are a coach. You are the coach that's going to make them feel better. And that's a very important part. I mean, the psychological part. And the omens at the beginning, the prashna at the beginning, are going to give you the hints to really give a really big, uh, uh, good uh, consultation, I think. Yeah, and there are some other small things also. Like sometimes when I'm talking to somebody, you know, it's not for consultation, for any reason I've seen or you go to talk on a specific topic, but just before the start of the topic, if there's an interruption, for some reason or the other. Important, yeah. Suppose there's a phone call, or it is also said there's one person who told me that you want to talk something with a person, you go and meet, and then suddenly that person says, I'll come from the washroom. <laughs> Have you seen people sometimes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that happens, especially with Zoom conversations. Yeah, coming just once and I'll come from the washroom. So that means the person told me that it means the 12th house is getting active. Washroom is 12th house, right? Of course, the toilet is the 8th house, but washroom in general, it shows wastage. Anything which is going, wastage of yes. water or leakage or expense. A type of expenditure, yes. Yeah, so he said, 
if that is happening it is best not to do the conversation or you really yes because <laughs> the 12th house is getting active then okay then the you will get the feeling of the 12th house there feeling of the 12th house means you uh, you both will feel that you can't stay with each other and especially if the person says if the person says i want to go to a washroom just to wash my hands maybe that's not important but if the person says i want to you know <laughs> go to the <laughs> number two yeah yeah, yeah one or two <laughs> then yeah. it's like congratulations <laughs> that, that is ending there <laughs> yeah it, it can happen or sometimes i have seen you know, some oh you go and talk like uh, i was uh, talking uh, supposed to talk with my mother regarding something and then suddenly out of nowhere it never happens there was a guest who came to our home and then i was like oh my god when i am going to talk and then what happened when i went and sat there <laughs> with my mother and my guest then the topic which i was supposed to say the guest took out that topic on some some issue the same issue and my god i saw my mother's reaction she was like no that should not be done that's terrible <laughs> Wow. I was like my god you have saved me if I would have said this in front of my mother she would be like I will rip you off if you do like this. So I'm like that these are so important you know and that's why spirituality is very important because it makes your mind calm it makes you aware now see as i said regarding this this like this so many things happen in our life but we are not aware that's the problem no? and that's what the spiritual practices are designed to do among other things right to really start listening to the silence you know start listening to the miracles that happen every day around us because we are living in a world of miracles and we don't even know it <laughs> you know we practice astrology so we kind of you know get a little peek yeah wow you know <laughs> but but the majority of people you know are not that aware of and that's our job actually to to become that bridge to to be optimistic and make um make the client feel good and and let them know that you know there is hope there is bliss and you know we're all here in the same ride and we have to enjoy it anyways it has been a wonderful interaction i guess sure i really like that we we one, talked a lot yeah one hour 40 minutes i, <laughs> I don't care i'm free today we were wondering if we it would be for 20 minutes i think yeah we thought it was going to be 20 <laughs> minutes but yeah well you know you can edit it whatever you want but you know i had a great time baba ji uh, thank you very much for inviting me man i i really hope this i, I didn't let you speak much <laughs> I, i don't care i don't mind you know i i don't need to talk a lot i just said what i needed to say and you know your stories were really enriching and they really they bring something positive to the table you know and i'm very glad to be here and once again thank you yes next time we will make sure we have some <laughs> other big yeah topics. sure <laughs> sure i mean i mean you know uh there's so many topics man and that's the great thing we can just be talking here and talking and talking and you know and you have a lot of material in your channel and you know this is just going to be another one but there's so many things man and that's the fabulous thing about astrology it's the really the best interdisciplinary um um discipline there is because you learn so much about so many things and it's never ending and you you're never going to stop learning so that's the great thing all right thank you very much <laughs> once again see you some other time okay namaste take care